Hi, it's Mike Stevenson. Today in the video we're going to talk about a feature in Serverless 360 called API Endpoint Monitor. So in Serverless 360 we have four modules. We've got business applications, which is the one we're going to talk about today. So this is about um, creating a support um, view for your day-to-day -day operations of applications you built with Azure. We also have business activity monitoring, which is for um, managing the higher abstraction of things like an order or an invoice as opposed to the technical components. We have Azure document there to document your setup and meet your compliance requirements. And we also have cost analyzer for helping to manage the money that you spend on Azure. But today we're going to be talking about business apps. So we take an example um, architecture here. So this is the service map from one of my demo applications in Serverless 360. So we have a, um, a LAMP stack application. We've got a MySQL database. We've got a web app on Azure App Service. And then we expose that application through front door. So um, users can come in, access pages and content. And in front door, we surface static images from a CDN. Um, so we cache them in front door, we surface them from the storage account and then dynamic pages would route through to the web app and they'll um, pull SQL data, sorry, data out of the MySQL database. Now, you've, for this application, you've really got a couple of things that you want to do. So you, as well as monitoring all of the Azure metrics, so the green boxes here, they've got metric monitoring for things like the app service usage, the front door requests, that MySQL metrics, but also... While they might tell you that the resource in Azure is healthy, it's also a good idea to make some uh, demo calls to your app. So we've got these two items over here where we're going to um, sort of make a request to our application and test that we get an expected result back. So the first one is going to route through front door, through the web app to the SQL database, and we'll check that that page returns successfully. The second one would request an image, which will route through to the storage account. So these, these should be checking that two of the key sort of use, uh, use cases for our applications working well. At this point, we'll have a quick look at what that looks like inside Serverless 360. Over here in the Serverless 360 portal, you can see I've got my tree view down the left and we're looking at my partner portal application. So what I'm going to do is show how easy it is to add an API endpoint monitor. So we can see up here we add API endpoint monitor, give it a name. We need the URL that we want to ping. We can then specify various authorization types if we want to. My page in, in this point is just a um, publicly accessible uh, URL for a web app. So I can at this point I can try that. And you can see here I'm just going to get the... I get a 200 response, but this is just the code that's in the application's default page. So that's all I'm really wanting to test for is does my app return its um, its main page? I could have a you know a diagnostic URL if I wanted to put some kind of API on there as well. Um, what we want to do next is we know that that's working. If if I was doing an API, I've also got options to specify headers or something. Um, I now need to specify my monitoring criteria. So I'm going to say if my monitoring's not equal to a 200, um, then we'll raise an error and I'll put the home page. It's not working. Please check the partner portal. So that that message would appear in any alerts you got sent out. So if you're getting an email, for example, you can do that. We can see the example of our responses here. Now. I can just add that and you'll see I now have my new test endpoint so that'll go and start monitoring that the next time we do all of our monitoring checks and that's how easy it is to set up your API monitoring it's just you know just add the URL tell us what you want to do with the response and then we'll go and monitor it now here you can see I've got a one for my test CDN which um, the last time we checked it uh, return to 403, not a 200. So that's what it would look like when I started having an error. So in the service map over here, firstly, I'd see in my tree view that it's gone red because that's unhealthy. 
so I'd know which app to look at. The If I got an email alert, for example, it would tell me the link straight to that app so I could go and see what the problem was. In the service map, I can click here and again, I can see um, what the problem is and why I'm getting a, an error flagging up so I can then start troubleshooting. Now, in this case, it might be that my, my storage account's broken. It might be that my front door's a problem. So that's where I'd, I'd know where to start looking at the problem and I'd know that my application was in an, old, an unhealthy state, even though, as you know, if you're just looking at the Azure monitor metrics, you might see that your application looks fine over here because none of these metrics are reporting that there's a problem, but one of the URLs that you expect users to use, that might be broken, which wouldn't fire up in an Azure metric. So you can see, you know, from the, the different perspectives of monitoring that you need to have on your application. Okay, so hopefully that showed how easy it is to set up an API endpoint monitor. If we now look at a couple of scenarios where you might use it. So in addition to making pings of your application, if it's a web app, you might also do things like in this case, we'd set an API endpoint monitor up that pings our function app. And then we can do some more advanced scenarios as well as just checking, does the function return a response? We might build some diagnostic um, functions. So one of them might check that we can connect a service bus and that might return a success. We can have one that connects to SQL. And all we can do is um, we can just add more API endpoint pings over in our business application and just make it really easy to test these dependencies to make sure our application is likely to be running well. Next up, we might have a scenario where we've got a logic app. So we've done this quite a few times with customers who build integration solutions with Azure. So you might have, in addition to, in addition to just the functional logic apps, you might put a helper logic app here, whose job it is to get pinged by the API endpoint monitor. And then that might do a test to say, can I connect to Salesforce? Can I connect to SAP through the data gateway? Return a success, and then I know that some of the common dependencies for my integration platform, they're working well, so my apps and my interfaces should be successful. Finally, one of the examples might be API management. So let's pretend we've got an API management over here. We've got a centralized view of our API. So some of them might ping out um, SaaS applications. Some of them might go on premise. So we can set API endpoints for all of the diagnostic operations we build. And one of them might go through VNet integration to your BizTalk on premise, and you could get a response coming back would be a good way to use your cloud monitoring to check whether your biz talks um, process and messages. Another one might be a diagnostic operation that just pings to a custom third party rest endpoint to make sure that's available. So if their system goes down, you can flag up your monitoring that something's wrong and you can sort of jump in and take action before interfaces start breaking. Hopefully this video was um, useful to you. If you'd like to find out more about API monitoring or you'd like to learn more about other features in Serverless 360, please use the link below or the um, QR code and we'll set a demo up with you, talk to you about your requirements and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy the product. Thank you for listening.